You'll never understand me. Peeps, what's up? How are we doing? Oh my goodness, I've got some stuff to chat about with you for sure. Um, goodness. Um, so before I did this video, uh, I think it was the Mothership video where I was chatting about Eunice and how we had got Eunice uh, over the, the geoport on that... Um, on that really interesting video that we had done um, with Object 5 and we were, or Video 5, where we were doing the testing and all that. And in plain as day, the, the voice that comes through says, Eunice, it sounds like it's almost in distress. It was super, super crazy. So I said that there was that group that was coming back here that initially found some information on Eunice and the the group did come here by the way now I was unable to sit down and chat with them and the biggest thing that kind of sucks is the person that does their research for them wasn't able to come this trip there was a, a family emergency and she wasn't able to be here so with that we were kind of in a stalemate now one of you on there um, who goes by the name anonymous on the patreon page Anonymous took it upon themselves to then start doing some digging and some research. Here's where it gets crazy. Anonymous found a grave. And the grave, which is right outside of town here, Anonymous found the grave of Eunice. Now, what's interesting in it is on the, on the tombstone itself, when you're looking at the tombstone, it says Eunice Ethel. Me being me, I thought Ethel was the last name. Turns out I was dead wrong. So I started to comb through, like, there's a really interesting document out there, and it is, it's called uh, A Brief history of malvern and if you go online and look up a brief history of malvern it will come up and it is you know birth announcements death announcements people doing this people doing that it just kind of goes back and forth it's 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 written very odd in a very odd way it's kind of hard to read it does get fairly dry in certain areas and so it's just boring is what it is but there's a really cool thing on there where you can type it in and you can see uh, like keywords. It'll search for keywords throughout the document, which is awesome. Um, now, I put in Ethel. I put in uh, Eunice, obviously, which both the names Eunice and Ethel were hitting uh, like a ton of different results, but never Eunice Ethel at all. Also, within that document, within the document of, you know, A Brief History of Malvern, it says that uh, the document itself ends on, it's in, I believe, August of 1909, which really doesn't help us at all either, because on the gravestone that we're looking at pertaining to Eunice Ethel, the birth, or excuse me, the death date is December 31st of 1909 so with the document ending in august of the same year august of 1909 eunice doesn't pass away until december of 1909 that document obviously isn't going to help us much right now where it gets fun anonymous then also took it upon themselves to start digging even deeper into this right ethel wasn't her last name at all. In fact, Ethel was just her middle name. Okay? So that's what we found out so far. Um, the last name pertaining to all of this, her name was Eunice Ethel Stamper. S-T-A-M-P-E-R Stamper. So Eunice Ethel Stamper. She was born 
uh, 7 15 of 1897 passed away like I said December 31st of 1909 she was 12 years old guys the exact same age as Inez Gibson um, these are obviously just nine years apart these tragedies are just nine years apart both these girls were the same age um, though but she is absolutely buried here uh, in Malvern Cemetery um, so yeah I mean really really interesting stuff for sure now where it gets fun because again we had thought and we had uh, that we had thought and kind of hypothesized that that Eunice had passed away here inside of this building. <sighs> Here's where it gets fun. Eunice's father, his name was William Stamper. Now, William Stamper, <laughs> William Stamper um, was absolutely tied to this building. Not only was he tied to this building, he was the... I guess if you want to call it landlord of this. So he wasn't he wasn't an owner like we had initially thought. No, he was in fact um, a landlord. Okay, so the landlord of the Cottage Hotel. He starts this job in, I believe it was August of 1909. If not August, it was July of 1909. Um, but then, um, so regardless, uh, and this gets so weird, guys, but here we go. While he is here, and while William Stamper is then uh, acting as landlord of the Cottage Hotel, there is a outbreak. The outbreak is diphtheria. Um, they also called it Quincy, or Quincy, excuse me, Quincy um, is what they also named it or called it or whatever. The, the outbreak of diphtheria apparently happened right here, inside of this building. The, the, the outbreak happened here, at the Cottage Hotel. This is bizarre stuff to me guys um uh, crazy crazy stuff diphtheria breaks out william's daughter eunice contracts contracts said disease it is only a matter of hours but she is quarantined here inside of this building somewhere Within hours, she dies. She passes away. This is crazy, guys. Um, but again, you think something like diphtheria, something that is highly contagious, it is airborne. People contract this. People um, pass away from this. And it is bad, and it is quick, and it is very, very unforgiving. But that happened here within the walls of what we now call Malvern Manor, what at that time was called the Cottage Hotel. This happened, it was terrible, um, but William Stamper was, like I said, landlord at the time. His daughter Eunice, 12 years of age, contracts this terrible, terrible disease where it then ultimately takes her life. Um, but again, she's buried right outside of town I, I can't even tell you. Now, William obviously um, has a wife and all of that stuff. Her name um, was Margaret Cabaret, which obviously then, her, that Cabaret was her maiden name. Uh, Margaret, she also went by Maggie. Apparently she preferred Maggie. Uh, but Margaret, or Maggie, um, Stamper then, uh, guys, this is just amazing. Uh, apparently in Eunice's death certificate, which we are also obtaining a copy of that as well, which I'm super excited about. Um, 
in her death certificate, it says she died of poison, which diphtheria apparently also would mimic a lot of the signs of a body being poisoned in, in a lot of different ways. Guys, there was a lot of different things back in that time. Um, for an example, people that uh, died of like suicide, for example. It happened. It happened often. Um, in death certificates and things from that time, it would also label it as an accidental death. Look at Inez Gibson, for an example. Thought to be a suicide. Now, the jury's kind of still out on that, but however, in Inez's death certificate, it does say accidental death. With people being as religious as they were back then in that time, most likely they were putting it in writing and actually documenting it as an accidental death to save face, so to speak, uh, for the family. I don't know. I just know that uh, this is just amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing. But it does say here that, you know, between William and Maggie Stamper, there were um, four children altogether. Four children. Um, Frank. Frank Stamper was the oldest. Uh, Minnie was kind of the, the middle child. Archie was, again, uh, the youngest then. Archie was the, the youngest. Um, and then, of course, we have Ethel. Um, now, Frank, it says here, was 16 years old. Ethel would have been 12. Minnie was 11. Archie was the youngest at 7. Um, guys, that's, that's all, just a shit ton of information that we didn't have a week ago and now here we are with just all of this stuff and guys like I I, I didn't even know for sure if I was going to do this video today like um, as I'm recording this like we have an event going on uh, tonight uh, that I'm trying to get ready for and so I, I mean, technically I shouldn't even be doing this video <laughs> but I've set up like the green screen I set up the lights I set up the cameras and everything just to do this because I feel it's that important. And guys, I'm so excited about the prospect of all of this information that we have here. And, and there's going to be more to come because now we can, with all of this, we can really start to dig even further. And now we can really check newspaper articles and all of that. So, I mean, definitely look for more, um, more videos on this subject for sure. What I want to do next though is, and probably put it as a part of this video as well, I want to go and I want to visit the, the grave site of Ethel, or excuse me, Eunice Stamper. Um, guys, another interesting thing that I want to kind of make a note of. We have been receiving a ton of responses for Eunice or what would almost seem to be from Eunice. Now, when Johnny Hauser was originally doing his show, Johnny Hauser Verse season two here at this building, it was kind of interesting because that's when the name Eunice was really starting to come through and it was very prevalent. Um, and this happened multiple times. Now, that was also right after I just got all of this information where, hey, there may have been a 12-year-old girl named Eunice that passed away in the building somewhere. We don't know anything else. But now we do, right? But here's what's interesting, right? All of that stuff started to happen. And then we do, we do that video for, you know, the video five of Object C, uh, with the, the testing videos and all that. And that name Eunice comes screaming through. And I mean, it was so loud and so prevalent. <sighs> to me, though, and this is just, again, like me being analytical, me being an investigator, right? I want to ask as many questions as possible. So with that, was 
that the voice of Eunice Stamper? Or was that the voice of somebody that had maybe potentially just learned of the passing of a loved one? Maybe potentially the voice of Maggie Stamper. Because if you listen again, if you listen, if you go back and watch that video and listen in for that name, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go and listen for that name, Eunice, when it comes just screaming through, does it sound like a 12-year-old girl? Does it sound like an ailing mother? I don't know. But obviously, I, I'm, I'm open to entertain any, any thought on this. And I think it's important that we do so. Because now, not only do we have Eunice's full name, we also have mom's name. We have dad's name. We have the brothers and sisters' names. We can really start to kind of dig into this. Now, guys, this isn't something that I'm necessarily going to be like sharing with a lot of people initially right out of the gate because I want to, I, I think this is special. I think this is something that we can enjoy together. And I think this is a case that we can kind of work on together, right? So for now, this is like a, a Patreon exclusive thing. Now, will it eventually make its way to the annals of YouTube or whatever? Probably. Um, I have to post, excuse me, I have to post everything that I put here on Patreon, I have to post into YouTube as well. So it has to be like an unlisted type of video or whatever. So the general public can't see it, that is for sure. Uh, but you can. Now, with all of that, guys, I don't know. But I've also, here's another interesting little thing that I'm entertaining as well. Looking at the original construction of this building, and for those of you that have not been to the manor, I apologize, but I'm, I'm going to probably butcher this in some way. Those of you who have been here to the manor will be able to kind of piece this together as I'm saying it. <clears throat> Excuse me again. But where it gets fascinating is if you look at the original construction of the building itself, what was the original um, skin and bones of this place? One of them obviously was the lobby and the area of the house that I'm sitting in currently, which is now what I call my office, all the way up to uh, that area of the building where there's a cool bay window. Basically Hank's room up above and straight down into what used to be an old office area or whatever. That was the original place, the original piece of this place or whatever. And then since then, they added on more and more and more um, to the east. Um, they kept adding on more and more. So looking at the original bones of this place and where would be a good place <clears throat> excuse me, to you know, quarantine a group of people, Either one, if it was a large amount of people, which it does sound like it was more than probably just a few. Um, you're looking at places like the lobby, maybe, potentially. I don't know. Um, you're also looking at even then potentially right here where I'm sitting in my office, which is also where I did the testing video, which is also then where we got the, the voice Eunice being screamed through the geoport. So guys, again, another, this is what happens with my brain. It just goes. Um, so I don't know where this happened, obviously, but I want to find out so bad. So I'm going to be looking into, you know, diphtheria. I'm going to be looking at, you know, Malvern, the cottage hotel, all of this stuff, uh, and trying to correlate, um, trying to correlate evidence and what happens and trying to get kind of a timeline, all of that stuff. So guys, it's about to get super interesting. It's about to get really cool, really fun, but I hope, I hope we can get some really solid concrete answers. And then with all of this stuff, this information, now we have a direction to follow when trying to communicate with whoever this is.
it, whether it's Eunice herself or whether it's Maggie, the mother, whether it's one of her sisters, I don't know, guys, but we're going to find out. Um, and then, like I said, have a direction to take the investigation when it comes to spirit communication. All right? So, guys, with all of that, <laughs> I hope that this video finds you doing well. I have to go and I get ready for all of this shit. Um, but I hope everybody's doing great. Um, and we'll talk to you all very, very soon. Peace. All right. Let's see if we can find, see if we can find Eunice. All right. So here's the directory. Let's cruise over here. Now, it says they are in lot 277, section 4. And 277, oh my god, would you look at this. 277. Look at this crap. Okay. Two seventy seven is over here, and I'm there. Holy Christ! So that's the county road, two seventy seven. So this would have been like the first entrance I go to. So all the way over by the front, guys. We're gonna try to find her. All right, guys. So I am here. Um, thanks to that directory or whatever, it really didn't take much um, because here I am. So guys, right here, we have William Stamper. So, I mean, he died just nine years after, or excuse me, 10 years after. And then right here, we have Eunice. June 15th, 1897, December 31st, 1909, at rest. We found you. Can't believe it. Oh, guys, this is so freaking cool. So freaking cool. If you guys are curious, right there is the county road that drives. So, like, Malvern's just over there. You come out of town, come this direction. It's the first entrance that you come to, and it's literally right here. So pretty easy to find once you know where you're going. Wow. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right. Hey everybody, thanks so much for checking out the page and watching a couple of the videos. If you like what you see, go ahead, get comfy, Check out a couple more videos. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Peace.